and 2005 Iveco Daily one wheel base camper van Mark free. Where shall we start? Shall we start from the outside? Let's start from the outside. The colour is not yellow, it's nato light stone. Often mistaken as yellow. Exotica. Now just on the top, I do have working lights that run along all the sides of the van. I also have cameras, which I have a monitor on the dashboard. The monitor just on the side panel there and I can also see it on the TV screen. I've got a light bar up top there and one just on the bumper. Not the best quality ones because they're starting to mist up a bit. Also I've got the, the sun visor along the windscreen there and the bug guard along the bonnet. Uh, ooh. So I've just had these alloys and tyres fitted. They are BFG Goodrich tyres. They're 16 inch alloys. I'll do another video on them on a later date. And underneath the van is a 30 litre LPG refillable tank. Obviously I've got the air bellows and just underneath the back end, just right about there, is the 95 litre grey water tank. And on the back, we've got more working lights up top, either side, the camera is in the middle and obviously Mary's Union Jack mural with the Swedish M90 camouflage colours within it. Now we did paint it the wrong way around, and that was my fault, not Mevy's. On the offside, we have the water fill up points, which fills up the 120 litre tank I have inside in the habitation area, just underneath the seat. Uh, that's the exhaust point for the hot water boiler, obviously fridge vents for the freeway fridge uh, 240 hookup point just there and yet again we've got some more lights working lights just running along top with the camera there as well there is another camera on the front as you can see it just there so I'm just going to climb on top of this hill so you can see on top of the van I was going to throw the drone up in the air but unfortunately it's a bit too breezy so uh, I'll go and climb this instead it's not Ben Nevis <laughs> oh, I should have put my boots on So on the front you can see I have a bifacial solar panel, it's uh, for memory 295 watts or thereabouts and as you can see I've got a ridiculous amount of skylights, all will be expanded inside. One to be honest is an extractor fan for the kitchen. Uh, the black box on the other side, that's all the uh, working lights, electrics, GPS and antennae up there as well. Should have said that. I beat that bit out. The uh, the round white disc thing is the TV aerial. Yes, totally pointless of me climbing that big hill. Now I'm on top of the van. Let's get down from this hill. The 
go inside if I make it down this hill in one piece. Right. So in the cab, it's fairly basic really. It's still pretty much an IV Eco standard cab. Obviously I've got the bulkhead fitted here, which is all insulated. It's all insulated up here as well, 25 mil king span. I've got switches up here, there for the light bars on the front. Just here, I do have cameras in four positions on the van. So I can see what's going on around me. Just there is my air compressor for my air suspension. Just down here, I do have a 10 inch Android radio in here as well. Nine inch speakers just behind me on each side. On the dashboard, I do have a, a small solar panel from a starter battery and the seats I'm sitting on are the Range Rover P38 seats. It has spring suspension underneath it. Now they are both electric. I have done a video on that. I'm just moving the seat forwards. It will reveal the diesel tank for the diesel heater. Now I fit it against the bulkhead here because when I fill up, I fill up my main tank and just pop the nozzle into this tank and top it up. And one of the questions I do get regarding the diesel tank in the cab, does it smell of diesel? Uh, no, because honestly I have not spilled any yet. I imagine if I did it will. And on the passenger seat side I do have a diesel heater mounted underneath it. The air ducting comes from the back through the bulkhead wall and just on the other side of that bulkhead wall is the adjustable nozzle to allow airflow throughout the van. I do have electric windows, heated wing mirrors and central locking which isn't going to work because I've got that door open but that's about it within the cab. So from the cab into the habitation area through the bulkhead. Now, just on the right hand side of you are some of these VW bench seats. I initially fitted these because myself and Dawn suffer with uh, back problems. The old type were just too uncomfortable to sit on. Uh, these do actually fold up like they do in the car. So at the back of the backrest of the seat is some storage space where I just put camera gear and stuff like that in there. I'll fold these back up again. Put them into position. And just underneath the base of the seat is my 120 litre fresh water tank. And probably can't see it from there, but just there is my Truma Ultra Star water boiler. So I'm just going to fold these seats back down again. Now, obviously, these are not for passengers. It's only a two passenger vehicle. It's only ever me and Dawn in here. So that's why they don't have seat belts. And it's past his MOT. Fine. as that? So just above the seating area. There's some storage cupboards, mostly stuffed with food. Uh, radio inside the habitation area with speakers. Uh, just above the cab, this is where I store my clothes. It's pretty much empty at the minute because obviously I haven't been anywhere since October. And just above the tabletop is this 21 inch Cello Smart TV. To be fair, I don't really watch a lot of TV. It's usually stuff on YouTube and things like that. And that just stores back in there and locks into position. And just next to the bench seat is my, well, it's 120 litre 
three-way fridge without the icebox but with the icebox the main cooling part of the fridge is 110 litres and as you can see it's full of beer on the opposite side of the fridge is my gas oven we've got the uh, oven at the bottom and the grill at the top I do find that very handy to have in a van because I do use it all the time just above the oven is the four ring gas burner hob got the kitchen sink hot the cold running water now in this cupboard if it's not all going to fall out uh pots and pans and yeah it's going to fall out pots and pans cups chopping board and utensils like that i have the van's wi-fi unit in here so i keep that inside this cupboard mounted up and this isolation switch is for the solar panel in case i've got to work on the solar charging system let's close it to keep all that crap in there just here is more for food storage coffee sugar salt and pepper cutlery door and the clever bit about this cupboard is there's quite a lot going on uh, I'll just briefly go over it because there's just too much to mention on the front here I do have a Raspberry Pi with the Victron Venus software on it so I can keep an eye on my battery levels, solar levels, LPG levels and water levels. I can also turn on the generator and the working lights around the van. It also has my security system, the camera security system in there as well. As we move further down I do have two 6 volt AGM batteries. Now they're 400 amps each. Now, I've made this into a 12 volt system, so obviously that's just, just going to give me 200 amps. They are fastened in by this ratchet strap, and I certainly ain't gone anywhere over the past 18 months. As we move further backwards, I have my air compressor pump for the air suspension. Just next to it is my LPG manifold, so it just taps to turn on the hob, the oven. Uh, water heater and the fridge yeah I mean just next door to that is the Victron MPPT and a couple of isolated switches one for the split charger for the starter motor and the split charger so I can turn it off isolate that and another isolator switch at the back that's between the MPPT and the batteries so I can isolate them when I'm working on the MPPT As we go in this cupboard, it's also electrical, we've got a bin attached to the door and as we go further inside you can see my 230 consuming unit. These are my fuses for the 12 volt side of things and just up here that's my battery charger for when I'm on hook up, it's the Victron battery charger and my split charger, standing split charger for the batteries as and when I'm driving. So the extraction fan, which, yep, just as a fall, never works, doesn't need replacing. I'll probably end up swapping it for one of those Max Air fans, I'd like one of them. I've also got a microwave. You don't need one, but I can use this one to hook up or via the generator. Just underneath the microwave are the hot water controls for the Truma Ultra Store water heater with a 230 volt socket there so when I was building this van I did use the 50 mil Kingspan insulation so the whole van is entombed in that stuff it's within the roof the walls and on the floor as well now I did cover the walls in this Bentley diamond pattern leverette it is flame retardant and I've done the whole van in that stuff barring obviously the shower room and the only reason why I went for this stuff is because I don't like tongue through cladding it's just not for me so from the seating area and the kitchen area we move on into the bathroom area now more for Dawn's benefit this I do have a sliding door here 
in case we've got the side door open and she wants some privacy. And slide it back into the open position again now. So just on this side we have the bathroom sink. Just along here we've got the Victron BMV battery monitor. Just below that is the diesel heater control panel, another 230 socket and some 12 volt USB sockets as well. From this side of the bathroom, just above me, is another skylight I can open up. And as we go from that skylight to the shower room skylight, I'll just swing around because we're not both going to fit in here, unfortunately, it's a bit, bit tight. But I have a fully working shower room. And as we pan down, I have the Fetford C250 toilet. And just below that is the shower tray. I'll leave the measurements up for the shower room. The Fetford chemical toilet is a flushable system and I can put the chemicals in there and top up with water and just down there because of the wheel arch I had to put the cassette door on this side. I do apologise it is absolutely impossible to make a bed in this bedroom hence the crease sheets but I can actually well, this is how we get in it I'm going to climb up the garage door and I can lay absolutely flat. Now I'm just below five foot eleven, and it is actually six foot. And I've still got what right about an inch. So it is exactly six foot. Just above my head is a row of LED lights. I can have just the ring light on, or all three LED lights on at the same time. Just above is an Hecky 2 skylight and it's absolutely massive. Just down here is another window we can look out on. So just underneath the bed is the door into the garage. So I'll just crawl through there and I'll show you what's inside the garage. Right, in the garage. To be fair, I do not carry a lot of stuff anymore. I've emptied it out quite a bit. Uh, the only thing I really do carry is some uh, small amount of tools. That green thing there is an air compressor for the tyres, some oils, and deck chairs really. That's basically, basically it in here. And here we have the generator. This room is completely sealed from the rest of the van. So no exhaust gases can leak from this generator. It's a pure sound wave generator. I do have, you probably see in a corner of your picture there, an extraction fan. I've got two of them on the other side of the van. This also cools down the generator. It's like a really powerful fan, sucks up cool air from outside into the generator. And obviously they extract, extract the hot air. It, it, is, uh, it does have an exhaust system that goes outside the van so it's all sealed but because I don't have an inverter on my van and if I need 230 volts it comes from this so here's my monitoring screen we've got the battery level we've got fresh water level uh, LPG level and what the solar system and the AC loads are doing now if I want to go across and start up my generator it's just a case of clicking on there accepting wait for five seconds after five seconds, there you go. Like I said in the garage, it's all sealed off. Also, just above that fire blanket is a carbon monoxide lamp in case any fumes do get inside the habitation area. If you want to stop it, it's just a case of clicking it back on, which says cancel. It counts down for five seconds. And shuts the generator off. Now I could do this on my phone as well, but if I do accidentally press it, I do have a kill switch here. Well, an isolation switch, I'll just press that in if I'm out and about. Put it back on the main screen again. So I'd like to leave it on that screen. And that's the battery monitor. So that pretty much concludes the tour of the van. 
I do recognise it's been a long video, I do apologise for that. But until next time, take care and look after yourselves. Exotica. Exotica. Exotica.